Who would I be without my trauma? That's a question that I ask myself all the time. I've had discussions with therapists and care workers and I said something along the lines of, I wonder if it wasn't for the sexual abuse I suffered at the hands of of males, would I be gay? I don't think so, now that I think about it. I think I would still love women very much. But I think that I would probably be more, you know, I think, I think I would be a bit more forthcoming when it came to my attraction to women. I don't think I'd be so timid. I think the effect that the abuse has had on me, it hasn't affected who or what I'm attracted to. I think it's affected the way I treat people that I'm attracted to. With men, there was often this entitled behavior that, I mean, up until like just a few months ago that I had with men, like just this really sort of entitled, like as soon as they showed like the slightest bit of vulnerability, I felt this intense, passionate pull towards them. And you know, just feeling that. It wasn't the fact that they didn't like me back. That's not what it was. Everybody else thought that that's what it was, but no, it's not the rejection. The rejection I could take. What I couldn't take was them rejecting me and me still feeling the same way. It drove me nuts. Like, and it would lead to behavior that was romantically aggressive to the point where it became abusive. Like if they wanted to, didn't want to talk to me anymore, I'd continue talking to them. Stuff like that, like just violating their boundaries a lot of the time. So romantically and even sexually, I could get aggressive with men because that's how I was treated by men. They didn't take no for an answer. They took every opportunity to humiliate me based on my sexuality and that was from very very young like that was from like as young as like what five I've been experiencing that so from that I didn't even realize I was doing it but I treated men in the same objectifying way that they treated me only nine times out of ten that didn't work because the kind of guys I went for were better at objectifying people than me. They were better at treating people shit like shit than I was. They meant just as much to me as I meant to them. Nothing. But because I was ambitious and I wanted power and I felt that as a woman I could only get it through another person, that's how I treated these men. Whereas with women, I was exceptionally timid. And I don't know. I was exceptionally timid when it came to women. And I used to kind of only really use my attraction to women to impress men. It was so gross. But when it came to my contact with women in general, I was very tentative and and, and, it, and it felt gross to me. Not because the women weren't attractive, but because I felt gross approaching them. I felt the same way that I felt like the men should have felt abusing me. I felt gross even thinking about women like that. I was attracted to women, but I just felt I can't use them for sex. I can't do it. Even even if it's like a straight passing woman who wants to experiment with women just to see what it's like, I would still find it really skeezy to treat her in the same way because of the way I've been treated. So with women who were willing and able to experiment with me, even women who are willing and able to do that, I find it gross because not not because it's women. I am sexually attracted to women, but because... Me being sexually attracted to them, it reminds me of men's sexual attraction to me or sexual advances 
towards me from the age of fucking five. So that is the way in which the abuse has shaped me. It hasn't shaped my sexuality because I'm a very open person and I'm not being funny if it's a man or a woman and they express interest in me and they love me and they like love love my spirit. I'm going to be with them. I don't care what gender they are. Okay. I don't give a damn what gender they are. I'm, I'm fucking pan. I don't care. Like if you're a woman and you come to me with beautiful vibes and you make it clear that you love me as a person and I love you as a person. That's it. That's it. That's all it takes. And if you're cute, if you're cute, if you're cute, I'm down for it. You know what I mean? But no, no, I realized that my, um, the abuse that I've been through in my background, it has shifted. It has, hey, how's it going? I'm going to wave back. It has affected my sexuality in different ways. Like, on the one hand, I don't want men touching me. But on the other hand, objective, I, I objectify them like like crazy. And the thing is, is that it's only through this relationship that I'm in that I'm kind of learning exactly how problematic my shit is. And when it comes to women, I love the hell out of them. Like, God damn it. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm cool. I'm cool, mate. I'm cool. Birthday's next week. So I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. But when it came to women, like, it, it was it was almost the opposite. It was like, Women flirted with me and they, they made it clear that they only wanted sexual interest in me. But I respected them more than that. It, it's weird. It's it's so strange. Like, they made it clear that they only want sexual congress with me. But I am so attracted to women that it's just like... No, I love your mind. I love your spirit. I love your... I lo- you know... With both genders, don't get me wrong, I have the capacity to love the person entirely. But I have a real... Honey traps are a problem. Honey traps are a problem. For for real, for real, they are. So, um, my bisexuality is not... Or pansexuality, I'm pan, I'm sorry, but... My pansexuality is not born from abuse the way that i treat my attractions are born from abuse and i feel that the relationship that i'm in now because i'm in a relationship with a guy and his his viewpoints and mine are pretty much aligned he's kind he's respectful he's you know and when it comes to you know, anything to do with, you know, sex, sex or anything like that, like, he doesn't treat it like it's disgusting or dirty, I feel so comfortable with him, I feel wonderful in his presence, I feel like he really understands me, like, on a deeper level, even if we don't understand each other on a surface one, and I think that spirit, yeah, I'm single, and then make it impossible to date, listen, man, no idea the amount of fucking cunts they put in your way like it's ridiculous as a ti the amount of degenerates they put in your way is ridiculous you'll find i think you'll find someone though i think you will find someone it's just a matter of you know because we're ti's we're feeling that love is impossible and it's just like no 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 i get it i get it No smart TI would ever trust anybody, but it's, it's, it's weird because the thing is, is that there's the perps, there's what the perps do, there's the perps plans and then there's spirits plans and spirits plans will always win out. So it doesn't matter whether you're a TI or not, you will find love at some point, you will find it at some point that, you know, it's not going to. My cops tried to kill me twice this week. Um, you know what? I'm gonna talk to you about the targeted individual stuff, like in a directed message after this live. 
because I, I created this live to talk about a specific subject matter. So I'll talk to you in the, the DMs and I'll get I'll get more stuff from you. But thank you for um, commenting. Um, so, yeah, my experiences with both men and women are like they vary and they're different because like I've met so many men who are so abusive and the thing that I do with abusive men is I don't necessarily respond no don't apologize please no no don't apologize um no don't apologize ever I I will I will message you I will message you don't don't worry about a thing oh well okay so yeah, so, um, yeah, when it came to, you know, men making advances at me, um, and disgusting advances, I just keep my head down, it's not like, it's not that I like it, it's just that I keep my head down, and I kind of, I kind of do whatever I can to avoid trouble, because, it, you know, the second I stand up for myself, it causes problems, especially if there's, like, rooms full of dudes and stuff like that it's like it's something I don't need to deal with um I don't know I don't know it's weird because with men who are like genuinely abusive I kind of like shrink down like that and then with men who are covertly abusive I'm like seriously fuck off fuck off. <laughs> but yeah my my experiences with abuse have affected the way that I've treated men and women, but like in weird ways, it's like spirit is trying to tell me it's okay. You know, it's okay to want what you want, you know? And I feel like spirit has been telling me that this entire time, but I haven't been listening. You know, you don't, I, you don't have to have abusive relationships with either of them. It can just be healing and wonderful and and kind and mutual it doesn't have to be you know that you know there doesn't have to be all this guilt because it's a wasted emotion you know there doesn't have to be all this guilt and shame attached because it's just a wasted emotion but that is how abuse and to a certain extent the demonization of sex which is what leads to abuse that's how it affects people it doesn't affect what you're attracted to it 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 affects how you meet those attractions and if you walk around unhealed you can become an abuser yourself hurt people hurt people i'm a ti and i'm glad to be a ti i'd rather be a ti than a perp but it doesn't mean I don't I've, I've never had abusive tendencies. It doesn't mean I haven't acted crazy. It doesn't mean I haven't invaded people's boundaries or invaded people's space. It's just that with me, it's been a lot less extreme than what is being done to me. That's the only difference. And I realized that through this love that I have found. And like, as I become, as I turn 36 next week, that. I've come a long way, but I still have a lot of work to do. And it also makes me realize that when it comes to sex, I have never really seen it as dirty or disgusting or not really. Because a lot of, you know, I used to be the so-called slightly one of my friends. But when it came to stuff like, you know, sleeping in the nude together or you know, stuff like that, they used to think, oh, no, it makes you feel horny, and I'm like, no, it's like, no, when you sleep naked with a person, you're, you're being intimate, that's how it's supposed to be, like, you're being intimate, you're being, you know, you're, you're sharing one another's space, you're kind of melded together, it's not about sex, and then when I had a crush on another guy, who used to, he had this specialty of basically seducing women through talking, and all I wanted to do with him was just talk all night. <laughs> That's when I was a teen, right? All I wanted to do with this dude was just talk all night. And they were like genuinely shocked that I wanted to talk. But I'm thinking, 
not everything has to be about sex. I was supposed to be the, I was supposed to be the one who was the slutty one, like who would, you know, sleep with people. And yet, even as a teenager, I knew that sex wasn't what other people thought it was. That's A. And B, not everything is about sex. It's funny how the ones who are the more, the more sexually active, they kind of understand the truth about what sex actually is. Because when you're sexually active like that, I mean, t- to be honest, I wasn't that sexually active. But I was more sexually active than most of my friends, right? But when you realise something, the thing that you realise as somebody who's sexually, more sexually active than her peers is that you have a different view of sex. You realise that not everything is about sex. The more sexually active you are, the less you talk about it. Because you're out there having it. What's there to talk about? You understand what I'm saying? And not everything is about sex. That's what you realise. The more sex you have is the more you realise, you know what, not everything is about sex. Sometimes you can sleep naked with somebody that you love and that's all you're doing. You're connecting with each other. You're embracing each other. There's nothing sexual in it. The naked body doesn't have to be sexual either. You can just you can just look at it and, you know, and say, oh yeah, that's a beautiful body, yeah. Or that's a body I'd rather not see again. Yeah, you can... You know, and it's not sexual. The more you connect with sex is the the less that you are taking control by it. And the less that you feel like you have to conquer it. Of course, there are some people who are promiscuous because they are desperate and because they, you know, that, you know, they just want to escape their own minds sometimes. But then there are other people who are sexually active because it's just a natural thing for them to do. Nothing wrong with them. They're not broken. It's nothing, it's nothing wrong with them. That's just something they want to do. But as for me, I realised that I have a lot of healing to do when it comes to that. I do have a lot of healing to do. And I do have a lot of my own demons to kind of, you know, to get over. But anyway, that's my, that's my time. Um, it was very, very candid. Um, but thank you for being with me and thank you for commenting and doing your thing. I love you guys. Take care. T.I. out. Bye bye.